So I'm really happy to say that my um, first guest is Charlotte Mitchell. And Charlotte is a costume designer and she studied fashion at Central St. Martins before moving into costume. Her previous work includes BBC's Endeavour, Hulu's Harlots and BBC's Killing Eve, of which she was nominated for a Costume Designers Guild Award. Um, Charlotte, I'm going to welcome you, bring you in now. Counting her down. There she is. Hi, Charlotte. Thanks Hello. for joining us. No problem. <laughs> um, so basically what I'd love to do with you is to kind of go through, we're going to talk about the wonderful The Pale Horse, which I watched on the BBC. Um, and we're going to talk to you about your process in pre-production um, of how you kind of got from the very, very beginning when you were called up and asked to join it, yeah. right up sort of to principal photography when they started mm -hmm. filming. So my first question to you is, um, how did you get involved with The Pale Horse? What's the process involved in, in getting a job like that? Well, with The Pale Horse, it was quite exceptional because I'd worked with the production company before. So they wanted me to do um, one of their Agatha Christie adaptations. Um, for an usual route, it would be a case of um, being interviewed and um, applying for the job through um, the production company contacting, we all have agents as costume designers. So the production company would contact my agent and say they're interested in seeing me as one of many, um, of which I'd then get yeah. some mood boards together and I'd go and see the director and the producer for the particular production. Now for the Pale Horse, because I knew the production company, Man of Screen, they, would, they were really keen to have me do this Agatha Christie adaptation. So I, I kind of missed out that awful, grueling stage of wondering if I was oh, going to get the job. And actually, How nice. Very luckily, <laughs> yes. I was going to get the job. Um, but still had to meet the director, who I hadn't met before. So she could have turned around and said, actually, we don't connect and I don't want to use Charlotte. But luckily, wow. that wasn't the case. <laughs> Has that ever happened? You've, you've met someone and not really clicked. I think, yeah, it can do. I mean, I go to I go to interviews, kind of, I read the script. So I, I always get given a script before an interview and I decide yeah. whether I want to do it. So it's kind of a process of the production company offer up the script and go, we, we're interested in this person or interested in Charlotte. And then I get given the script from that and read it and go, okay, I'm interested in meeting them. It could be that I read it and go, it's not for me. It's really- Yes, exactly, dying. yes. Um, and then then we go to the interview, I meet the directors, I meet the producers, and I have had jobs where I've gone, you know what, I love the script, but I just don't like, don't feel like I can give them what they want from, yes, from yes. you know, it doesn't suit my type of design. So yes. I think you have to be realistic to what you know your design is and what you want to achieve from it. You know, I've already read the script, I've started kind of panning out ideas, I've done mood boards for this interview, or I might start visualising it and thinking, I can't, you know, the script has things written in it, like she wears this and she's this type of character. And I'll, I'll, read, I'll read the script and be like, well, I don't see her as that. So I right. don't know. How I'm and it is a collaboration, it. isn't it? You, yeah. You're... Well, you want to, you know, I've just done, a, I'm just doing a job before lockdown where, again, I was, <laughs> I was approached for it. They wanted, to, they wanted me to do it. I think I was the only one they saw. Um, and I read the script and at first I was like, I'm, you know, this is new. This isn't my usual style of job. So I'm intrigued by it. But I want to ask yeah. a few questions. So in that particular interview, I asked a lot of questions about the character. I almost, it's almost an interviewing process for me as well as them interviewing. Yes. You know, it's both ways because you want to make yes. sure it's the right fit on both sides. Yes. And you want to make sure you're going to get on with that director because you have to have so much interaction with them. That and so much time is spent with yeah. them. It's a yeah. really long period of time. And full yeah, and also them. kind of a case of you need to know that you're going to be able to read each other's minds because sometimes you don't get yes. the time. So you need to yes. know you've got a big enough connection to go, OK, I get I'm on the same page as you. We don't yes. need to have another meeting. I'm there. Let me run with it. And trust me. And that's what you want to achieve. What happens next then? So from that interview process, obviously, I've already done a few mood boards and they've seen them. So we started discussing it. I'll take that away. I'll reread the script in more detail. I'll do more mood boards. I'll start breaking it down into characters. So from the script, we, yeah. we kind of call it, I think you mentioned this as well, what does breakdown mean of the script? We break yes. it down and it's different at different points. So this is the first stage of break, breaking the script down, which is the costume designer doing it. It's not very right. technical. It's done very differently depending on who's doing it. Like as in every costume designer, I'm sure, does it in their own way to suit them. I, 
I will break the script down into characters. Um, how many story days are for each character? Um, what kind of tone each character is trying to exist? So I'm trying to create a story and a color palette and a silhouette against each character so that they all have their individual styles. So they don't merge. Right. Okay. And but complement each other. Complement each other, and then how they sit together. And it's all sort of it's an organic process. I mean, it sounds really cliche saying that, but it is. It's kind of it builds slowly because obviously. You, sometimes on jobs you don't get all the scripts up front. Sometimes you've only got the first um, two episodes. Oh, right, um, okay. You know, on the Pale Horse, <clears throat> because we're talking about that, It's I was very lucky because it was only two episodes um, long. Obviously, I had both up front, so I was able to design the whole job right. from start to beginning, which is brilliant because then you can really map through where the colour starts with a character to where they end. Um, yes. So... Um, and then from that breaking down script, you've also got to consider the budget. So at that stage... Ah, and is that something you do? Do you do the budget or does someone say to you, this is how much you've got? Yes. Yeah, so it's when I get the job, I go and see the producer, <laughs> the line producer, the money people, and I will say, how yes. much is the budget? I might have asked this right. before getting the job because I might want to know so that I know it's um, realistic to what I can produce. Yes. Sometimes I can trust it. Like the pale horse, I pretty much knew what it was going to be because um, it's it. I I I know them. So yes. I guessed what it was going to be. I went to see them, and it was in line with what I hoped. Um, sometimes it's not, and you need to then do a breakdown of the budget and go, okay, this is what I think it's going to be. If you can't give me this extra money, then we might have problems, and you have to find right. your corner. But yes. usually, there's a kind of there's a little bit of sway, but usually. Um, you kind of are working in lines to what the production company have offered you and then you break it down to each character and see if it's realistic and how you're going to factor that in um and i i will do that at this right. stage um because this is still the early stage <laughs> so yes, i will do that yes. um, well, i will be really naive about it and i'll go through the script and i'll literally write down each character that comes up and i'll do a little line next to them for every story day i think they're in and this is me guessing because the script right. supervisor will always do the ultimate story days Right. But at this stage, your script supervisor isn't on board. So you're guessing where you think the story day changes are or how many changes, how many costume changes are needed. And so right. I'll literally do that <laughs> on a piece of paper. And then I'll translate that all into an Excel spreadsheet. And so, say, the oh. pair of holes, Mark Eastbrook might have had 10 costume changes. Hermia might have had 12, oh. blah, blah, blah. Right. And then you add up how much you think that will cost. So to make a suit for Mark is um, about... 1200 pounds plus fabric so and would you always make it is that because of the period it's in or would you sometimes well again it's down it? to budget if it's a big budget yeah. and i've got the time and i've got the actor in time i will absolutely yes. love to make it but here's the next stage of problem that's problematic is a i have to work out is the actor going to be available to me in time sometimes they're not cast at this stage i haven't got cast at this stage yes so i have yes. to think worst case scenario is i might have to hire it all because i might not have the actor until a day before filming right. um so i work out the budget of like okay what would i want to do i'm probably going to hire 80 percent of his suits and then make 20 percent that's yes. in, that's kind of what i would you know realistically think i can achieve yes um and, it's, and as you can see, the budget constantly changes because when the actor comes through with two days before filming, which Rufus did. Oh, my goodness. I then realise I can't make anything. And then, well, that's not true. I, at first, I think I can't make anything. And then I <laughs> go to do a fitting with him. We find some great suits to hire. And then I look at the schedule and think, well, there's some story days in the script that aren't being filmed on until a few weeks' time or a few months' time, which gives me some time to make some more suits. Right, because it doesn't go. That's the one thing. It doesn't go in order when you're filming sometimes, does it? Like different yeah. scenes you shoot out of scenes, like out of the flow of the, the yeah. production. Well, yeah, you so. shoot out of sequence because you, you know, you've got to shoot in line with what's more, you know, what is cost effective for production and filming. So they'll shoot all the studio interior first, which will be over different stories. Or they'll see. shoot the schools. I mean, I'm not talking about the um, across any. Yeah, but I drama. understand that. And yeah, so if it's all outside shots, they'll do all the outside shots. Yeah, first or they'll go the into time. school. If it's in a school, they'll do it in the Easter holidays or the. Right. So you okay. don't, you yes, know, that, but that might be day one in the story. 
My so gosh, right. It's, okay. So everything is a movable beast. Everything is a guesstimate. It's quite... You're kind of putting your name to a budget that is completely a guess. So you have to put in lots of buffers to be ready yes, for anything that yes. changes. Miscellaneouses, lots of miscellaneouses, just in yeah. case. Yes. And when you, when you say make the suit, is that actually you from the pattern, making a pattern, or do you get a pattern and a cert? How does that work? Well, for me, and again, I'm sure designs work in a different way, but for me, I will start with process of going, if it's a period job like the Pale Horse, it's right. not set in 1961 and I'll go to a higher company or go to the vintage shops and I'll find something beautiful, fit it, which I did, fit on Rufus, checked what suited him, do a little tweaks with pinning to make it look better. And then I take that to my tailor and say, this suit works really well on him. However, I want to do this tweak, this tweak and this tweak in this cloth. Let's oh, make wow. the pell a bit wider. Let's make the, and, and he'll pull something together. He'll pull a toile together, which is the first kind of, fitting sample that I put on Rufus and we check if it's kind of the right feel and then and then make it from there so a lot of you customize so you customize something you'd find something you like the look of yeah and then try it on him and then you would go in and say this is this is the basic look I'm going for but I want this different and I want that different and I want yeah. the lapel wow I didn't yeah. realize that that's that's kind of from a certain point of view yeah that's a good starting point I mean obviously you have yeah. other, other bits where you can design from scratch but yes. with, with a period costume, I think yeah. it's really nice to keep the identity of the period. So I do find the yeah. original suit and then think, well, yes, but the colour's not right or the weave isn't right. or So I can find that fabric and go, well, we'll make it to that silhouette. Yes. And it's just starting to build. I mean, everything, it changes with every single job. But but that's a basic, that's a really basic way to start thinking about it. That's pretty you know, amazing. I never with, knew that. With, with Hermia, um, Kaya's costumes, we... We found lots of, well, actually, if we go, I, I, I mean, looking at, you can see this from my mood board process, the original <laughs> ideas of what existed in 1961 and what kind of would work for her. So I went with very um, tailored, um, high designer shapes there, um, very nipped in at the waist, almost like an armour because she's quite a guarded character. Initially, when I read that, I was like, well, this, this is the kind of images that felt right for her character. So I, these are all yes. original images. And here you've got Balmain. You've got Christian Dior, you've got Saint Laurent, um, high-end shapes and silhouettes from 61. And also really portray the shape that was correct for 61. It wasn't swinging 60s, it wasn't 1964. No, it was more, no. It was more very feminine, very conservative, and I really wanted yes. to push that. This is, right. this is, these are the silhouettes that I'm looking at for Hermia, you know, and, and just sort of get a feedback on that. And you can see I put a colour palette on there as well to order and say, you know, from the from the fact that I want it quite conservative and her be quite armoured, I want the colour palette to be quite steely and yes. neutral. Yes. And, and, and send it across to the director and producers and get their first feedback on it. And that's their initial feedback. And then I can kind of keep moving forward from there. So it's constant communication. And then we go to the next, um, the mood board, which um, has the pieces I found in the higher houses, um, which kind of relate back to the mood board. So this going along the lines of the same sort of silhouettes. And obviously, it's not always, it's a very difficult one because you show pictures of the original stuff, photos that you really want it to look like, and then you can't physically find that exact thing. And the director might yes. say, oh, um, oh, I love that one, that shape with the yellow jacket. Yes. And you're like, well, that might not exist. And unless I have an actor in time, yes. I can't get it made. So how yes. are we going to do this? <laughs> so it's again, it's another process. But I found pieces that I thought kind of had a feeling of where my mood boards were, put them on the stand and started building what was available. So worst case scenario, if the actress didn't come through in time, I knew I would be able to have higher things if I couldn't get things made. Um, and do you go, is it places like Angels? Is that where Yes, yeah, a it... mixture. We've got okay. Angels, who are um, massive. Um, yeah. We've got Cosprop. Now, Cosprop is someone uh, somewhere I'm very, I hold very dear because I used to work there. <laughs> so, ah, right, um, okay. And Cosprop um, are, are smaller, but they are as high end and they um, they don't tend to go this late into the period. They do do 60s, but they're not as well known for it. So I went to Angels mainly because they're known for 60s. They, well, they do 60s um, yes. in, a lot. Um, and then I went to Cosbrot to find any key beautiful pieces that no one knew they had because they're not known for doing 1960s. Um, plus, right. there's menswear. I went to places like Carlo Manzi's that do menswear and women's wear, but they're known more for menswear. Um, 
And they also do have some beautiful late women's 1960s as well. So Carla Manz is. Um, and then you've got so many more, but you kind of have to stop yourself because you don't have time to go around all around England pulling yeah, from all the costume houses and, yes. and Europe. I mean, like, it could go further yes. afield. I mean, it depends. Yes. Something, like, something like Harlots, which was 18th century. We went to, you know, Spain. We went to Italy. It's, it's, um, you can go as far as you want. So you went for Harlots, just getting off the subject, so you went yeah. for Harlots, the costumes, you, did you start then looking for something a bit like the suit? You started looking for a baseline almost and then yeah. you developed from there? Yeah, it always, my process is always the same. I start with doing oh. images like you just saw, the first board, yeah. and then seeing what was available in the, in the hires and put it on stands. Right. So, um, and this image here that you can see is um, costumes on, on stands from Cosprop and from Angels. I think there's one from Carlos there as well. And I will do that whatever job because it's always good to know what's there because even if you don't use it on your principles, you have hundreds of extras you need to Of course, yes, my gosh. So you will always gosh. need to have a stock of costumes. So you'll always use it. That's right, Hermia chops up Mark's suit. We're going to put this in a script. And this was like halfway through um, filming. And I didn't have this on the um, in the original script. So I was just, I was like, what? She cuts up his suit. Well, we've already established his suit and for that story day. And this is going to be a huge cost because that means making another three suits. So you can do it three times at different wow. angles, at least. And I hadn't factored that in, but obviously I'd had buffers. So we made it work. What was your very first job as a costume Oh designer? gosh, my first costume designer job was um, oh, the most wonderful little job. It was, um, it was called an eye feature. So they were like small... Um, little films that had very little budget. I think they were like 300,000 or maybe 500,000 pound budget. I had a team of one other person, but we got a, very luckily got a, a trainee work experience who'd just done another film with me when I was an assistant. I mean, I'd already worked in the industry for 10 years prior to that, working my way up oh, to different wow. levels. Wow. But oh to be gosh. a costume designer and come into it, all of a sudden you realise what the person you'd been assisting for years what yes. that pressure really feels like to be yes, the head of the department. Yes. So you were a costume, did you do all the different roles? Were you just a costume yeah. assistant? Or? No, I worked my way up, so I was trainee. Then I was a costume wow. standby, so that's being the on-set person that looks after the costume and the actor on set, looking right. after the continuity and um, working to the, obviously the, the, the um, working to the costume designer's requirements. And then um, I was a supervisor, so that's more the kind of what I call the project manager of the department. And then right. I was an assistant designer and then a designer. <laughs> so I went wow. for the industry's changed a lot. I think back um, slightly before my time, it, there was definitely you went in straight as a costume designer when you were when there were things like there was staff at the BBC and your training was that you went in as a costume designer and trained as a costume right. designer. Now, usually you go through a process and there's different ways. Um, you can go the way I went, which a lot of people do, or you can go in as an assist, a trainee in the design side of things and then become a, a, maybe a buyer, assistant designer, and then go into a designer role. Or it depends on the level of production. It really depends on the budget, um, the size of production. So if it's a big, big feature film, you will have the design lot and then the supervisor and the, and the um the kind of running department, the run department, and then you have the kind of making department and you have the breaking down department. So it depends which avenue you want to go in. And yeah. if you're in a bigger production, you can do that. You can stay in your little avenue. Whereas yes. if it's um, mainstream TV, which um, they're good budgets, but you tend to just have trainee, two standbys on set, yeah. a supervisor, an assistant designer and a designer. And if it's slightly bigger, you might have a costume coordinator to help with the budget and doing all the petty cash. Right. Um, etc and you might have a buyer but when you you've got that and then that compares to a feature film where you've got massive departments yeah, that are completely separate yes of course okay so let's go back to we to uh Hermia's costume i've got one of her looks here should i put that up for you yes Our outfit and actually this was one that i hired but i completely altered so from from my original first mood board, I had all the feelings of it, you know, original photos of um, models wearing 1960s clothes all nipped in at the waist and very controlled. Then I mm. saw what was available from the next mood board. And then I found this dress and I put it on Kaya in the costume fitting. And we do about one to three costume fittings. And um, 
And the first one, we put it on her with all the correct underwear underneath. And it, I loved the collar. I loved the shape of it. It had that kind of severe yes. kind of feeling that we wanted, but also a bit of fragility yes. showing the arms. So yes. it didn't look like this when I first put it on her. <laughs> so we oh, altered it massively and made it, we could see something in it and we wanted to go with it. And it's almost better to use what we had rather than have something made from scratch because this had such a wonderful, correct period quality because it was original. And the fabric but, had like stiffness it needed. Sorry, but so did you say that you hired it originally? Yeah, I hired it. This is one of the ones that I found. So one of the ones- And then I, if you change it, what happens then? Do you have to- We can't cut anything away. We just have to, um, we have to alter it and then leave all the, fabric in there so it gets put back to how it was before. I see, right, okay. Oh, so gosh, this sorry. this would have had, I think what I had to have done to it was, I had to take it all in down the waist, it was a lot bigger. I wanted to shape the bust line a bit more so it had that slightly um, pointed bust line. Um, I really, I think I managed to lengthen it a bit. It was a bit shorter. I think we took it to the absolute right. max to get it to the right point on the knee and I think it's still a tiny bit short so I had to kind of let that go. But I, for my, me being fussy, I think that's a bit short. But anyway, we let that go. And, <laughs> and the collar, I think I managed to find some extra fabric in it and extend it out past the shoulders. So that it just had that wonderful, wonderful yes. point. But obviously we had to then put it all back before it got sent back to the higher company. Ah, right. Okay. So you have to return it to its original, yeah. its original and, form. And the belt wasn't, they didn't have a belt. So that was actually a really amazing dyed bit of leather had dyed to match so the colour was just slightly darker to give that darkness at the waist and just also give a right. slight shine just again to bring the eye into the waist so it really get that nipped in quality at the waistline so it's very subtle detailing yes. but, um, but those things are really you know really important and really exciting when you can kind of make something that already exists into something utterly beautiful and then do you collaborate with hair and makeup as well because I think her hair as well that kind of a bit severe pulled back yeah. You can see that in this scene to me, she seems very upset about something <laughs> and the hair and the makeup goes into that as well. So is that something you work together with hair and makeup yeah, on? Yeah, it's really great when you get on with the hair and makeup designer and I do on this, her name's Jill and she's amazing. And basically, again, at the very first stage, the first mood board you just saw, I will also send that to hair and makeup and say, this is where right. I'm going with it. What do you think? And they, and they kind of pick up ideas from that. So usually costume are on board before hair and makeup so we are one right. step ahead which right. means hair and makeup do tend to kind of they can follow our lead but equally they inspire us as well and they go well actually no I saw her more like this so it's it, again it's a collaboration yes but it, it yes. is just um we are on board earlier than hair and makeup so that kind of usually it's me that sends the mood boards over to them to say this is what I've discussed with director so you know where we're at where, what stage we're at i'll just while you do that i'll just discuss that photo as well what you can see in it is the color palette again it's trying to uh, that's the other person i have to talk really clearly with is production design and coordinate my color palette against theirs so that you can see she belongs to her environment and right i and, see and i really was keen to keep that steely color palette and i went to see jeff the production designer on this job and he he was like absolutely that's going to be really really great against this is the fabric i was thinking about using on the walls this is the color oh, and so and so i want to make sure that i'm not going to put her in a beige dress Sorry. well imagine if she was in bright red it would just i mean it could yes. be something interesting but i really wanted her to feel like she was almost a wallflower she was yeah, almost, she's blending in there isn't yeah. she? she's almost invisible yeah so and that's how she is that's what the poor character hermia was was basically trodden all over by her husband. So, so that's, yes. that's kind of the whole really important thing was she really had to belong to that flat, almost like it was like her prison. You know, after you've done all this work, when it goes on screen, sometimes you won't even get, as a viewer, yeah. that amount of time to kind of really look into no. everything she's wearing, the, what's behind her. You know, you don't get a chance to see all that in depth. And sometimes it gets cut completely. And then the flow... Oh. The flow of colour that I want to do, the transition of oh. story through colour and silhouette gets cut and moved around and you're like, well, that was lost. Oh. <laughs> yes. And if anyone's not seen The Pale Horse, 
go and watch it it's amazing it's still on um i think the bbc iplayer yeah it is. and i also i think i, I saw it on um amazon or netflix as well it's, it's on amazon brilliant. prime because it went over yeah. co-produced with amazon so it's ah. bbc and amazon um so here she she's not as pale but the reason i i mean i want to just talk about the color the reason i chose her to be yeah. in navy was because she's in the village and the village is going to be very floral and pastel and pinks and yellows and all the rest of it and become part of the Cotswold Stone um, and I wanted her to jump out as this quite strong austere yes. block totally incongruous to the environment um, in fact her and Mark both had to stand out so he had to be super sharp and again that steely yes. palette and again just Hermia's clothes just going looking at it again I still kept that kind of armour quality in fact this dress yes. was fantastic because it, it really it kind of embodied the kind of um, Saint Laurent dress from Belle de Jour which we kind of wanted to look at well, Belle de Jour was yes. filmed from the 1960s and Saint Laurent designed it designed the costumes and we really wanted to emulate that at certain points the director was really keen to kind of keep referencing Belle de Jour so I made sure it was a dress that really felt like it had the same shape as a Saint Laurent dress yes and she was she felt trapped as well didn't yeah. she within her relationship yeah. this dress and what she's, she's holding a scarf there and this is all to do with the fact that there was a slight feeling that she was almost being allowed out mark was taking her to um, a village to a fate and it was almost her weekend she she felt like she could soften so i gave her a headscarf that she wore around her head and got into the open top car and it all felt very like the first moment of hermia feeling free and like oh wow you know but then as soon as you take the headscarf off it's back to this kind of controlled silhouette because actually Mark's doing it for his own benefit, not for her benefit. If I if I ask an actor how they feel about it, they go, yeah, that's fine, I don't mind. It's like, well, you're not yes. really going to grab hold of it and take it if you don't, yes. if you've got no kind of feeling. So yes. I always I always want to involve them and see how they feel. So I go into the fitting with this really strong idea. I'll take the mood board in to show the actress. I'll show um, them the rail of clothes where I'm thinking of going and see how they you know how they react to it and sometimes they might say actually I really didn't see them like that and I'm like okay and we, I want to find out why you know discuss it with me yes. because obviously I've had a discussion already with the directors and producers and I've had a whole and hair and makeup and production design even before the actors come on board so I need to kind of make sure I understand where they're coming from and actually to most of the time it's the fact that they they it is the same feeling it's just a different way of expressing it um so for the pale horse would you have taken all the outfits for both episodes into that one fitting because it's only two episodes i was able yeah. to take nearly all of the costumes the whole two episodes because that isn't too overwhelming you know that's yes. i usually try and keep my fittings to two hours if they go over two hours oh, we're, all, really? we're all wanting to lose the will to live basically I mean, with, with Kaya's fitting her, who plays Hermia it did take a little bit longer but only because we had so much fun with it we found the right pieces but everything wanted pinning and re-looking at and remodeling the underwear remember this is 61 so you've got a certain shape of bust you've got a certain waistline you've got a certain hip line you've got a corset you've got a con conical and she got that and she was so gay Kaya is amazing she she was like, yeah, brilliant, you know, get this shape, this is amazing. And she's got a gorgeous figure, don't get me wrong. Yes, amazing yes. figure, but no one has pointy boobs like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I will be realistic, that wasn't her bosom. <laughs> <laughs> So you had to make it kind of to get well, that shape. Yeah, I mean, it's a I weird shape, isn't it? Even Monroe must have had some sort of kind of, it just it's just quite a dramatic silhouette. <laughs> Yes, yes. Wow. That's... So then you've chosen, you've decided, you've had the fittings uh, with Kaya. Yes. You've gone through certain looks. And then do you have to then go back to the director or is the director there during fittings? How does that work? Um, not so much nowadays. The director's not there. They just don't have time. So yeah. and, and in fact, it's probably better they're not because we, again, I'm going through a process and we're trying things on. Yeah. And then I need to look at the photos after I've done the fitting. So I take lots of photos. I need to look at the photos and see, well, actually, that didn't look as good as it looked to the natural eyes. And maybe is it yes. worth proceeding with that? Yes. Um, so I kind of manipulate the photos and then as in which ones I'm going to show yes. and then send them off to the director and the producers um, and get their feedback on it. And, and Leo, the director on The Pale Horse, who I adore, she said to me later in a, when we met up for a glass of wine after the filming finished, she said, you know, did you, you do, you have a strong feeling for what you want, but, and you really pushed me, but actually I'm really pleased you did because it, 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 it worked and, and I trust yes. you and I had to almost just let it go sometimes because I just had yes. to believe 
and that's the whole point and and i and the same goes for me with her she would say to me no i want this and i'd be like oh i don't get it and then i'd see it on camera and be like oh because i hadn't factored in the fact that she was thinking about yes. using it in a different way it it you have to trust each other uh, one thing i wanted to ask you in regards to your team because i know in the costume department i tend to work with lots of people costume supervisor coordinator um, assistant as well as the designer mm -hmm. do you get to choose your own team or was somebody recruiting people and brought them on how does that work okay that's a really good question yeah i suppose no one would realize um so i we bring on our own teams we absolutely okay. do and for the same reason that you know the director gets yes. to choose the costume designer you need to work with people that you have good yes. um kind of vocabulary with as in you understand each other i mean the filming process is so fast paced. I mean, people think it takes ages to shoot a scene and it does, but there's never enough time in the day to make decisions or give uh, communicate your ideas. You're always yes. on to the next thing or being pulled away. So you you need people that kind of know you, understand you. Um, yeah, it's it's really important you have you have your team that you know. And and I have I don't have the same team on every job because they might no. not be available because we're all freelance. Yeah. So we all go and do different jobs at different times it might not line up that can have the same team but I have a pool of people that I know are great and I love working yes. with and I always reach yeah. out to them first now on the pale horse actually my assistant designer was um, someone I hadn't worked with before because it was a very busy summer there was no one available I'd been I knew I was going to be working on the pale horse so I'd held out for it so I hadn't been working for a while because I knew I was waiting to start yeah, for Christy. And so from that, I, I'd already sort of found out that most of my team were already on other jobs because I'd said to them, go, because I'm not going to work until May. And it's now yeah. it, it's now March. You can't hold people back, yeah. can you? Because everyone's and, free lots. So. Exactly. So then, so I had to interview for a new assistant designer and it's scary. It's really scary. Yes. Um, not to have someone new, but actually it worked out really well. Because, <laughs> I, you know, I, I've met the most wonderful new assistant designer who I adore, and we worked really well together. I really enjoyed what she brought to the job, because obviously they're also, every one of my team is bringing their own handwriting to it, their own style, and it helps influence me. It helps open my eyes to something else I hadn't thought about. Yeah. I have ultimate say as the costume designer, and I have ultimate responsibility, but having people that kind of feed and are exciting and have good energy about the job as well is really, really beneficial. And you want to yeah. let them enjoy it. And it's their job, you want to let them have some kind of feedback into it. So you are, again, collaborating even within your yeah. team a little yeah. bit, you know? Because there's so many people to dress. So, for instance, you're doing principal cast. Do then do you then divide the other? So the extras or the people in the background. Is that is there a specific role for that, or is that just something you share out? How does that work? Um, again, for me, everyone's different. Every costume designer wants to do it differently. I I have ultimate, yeah. obviously, ultimate say purely because I'm having those conversations with higher up, with the director, and producers. But definitely, I mean, I will. Uh, so. My assistant designer, Amanda, was um, looking after the crowd because we had a big crowd days um, yes. on, on it. And I wasn't available because we had late casting, which happens quite a lot these days, sadly. Yes. But um, we had very late cast, so we didn't get our two leads till the week before we started filming. Um, and that's the same week that we're meant to be fitting all the extras. So it meant mm. that I had, obviously I did loads of mood boards, which I handed over to Amanda, my assistant designer, and said, this is the feeling that I've discussed with everybody for the Soho scene. This is the feeling for the village. And I'd already pulled out all the costumes with Amanda. So we both pulled them out together. And then those mm. costumes all get put into a room and they do two days of fittings. Amanda and my team do two days of fittings. Um, and I'm not able to be there. And again, they take the photos and almost like I have to for the director, they do the same for me and show me the photos and say, this is what we've done. And I, I might tweak bits and go, OK, that's not quite work, working for that type of scenario yes, or that yes. type of village feel. But, you know, I'm seeing them all together and, and, and yeah, you have to let go and you have to let them get on with it because I haven't got time. I'm, I'm there. No, you can't do everything. And I, That's so much work. Oh, my gosh, I didn't even, I, you know, I don't know what I, th well, actually, I thought that you know it would be divided up but obviously because you've got the main vision you still have to make sure that the crowd 
that what they're wearing also fits into the overall vision and, and picture and storyline. So you've still got to do all that as well. My goodness. Yeah. So, we, you know, I did I did lots of mood boards at the beginning for the different feelings. Pale Horse was quite wonderful because it's, it's quite obviously split into areas. So you had Soho. Yes. You had the yes. village. And you were the like, pagan the, festival. The pagan oh my gosh. festival, yeah. Wow. And then you had the kind of outside of Mark's house, so the more conservative Chelsea area. Yes. So yes. it was like the, the rock and tumble of Soho, the posh conservativeness of Chelsea, and then the rustic backdatedness of the of the village. And the village had to follow how the witches looked, which I obviously designed as the, the witches were the principles. So yes. I designed the witches and then I had to filter that through to Amanda to go, well, this is the feeling of the course. witches. So the village has to be in line with them. Of so course. it's it's you oversee it, but you have to let it go to them to then yeah. take your handwriting and fly with it, basically. Yeah, yeah. You have to have a little bit of trust, which is again why it goes back to working with people that you know yeah. will kind of understand how you work. And, and I, I said almost... this to my team because I always I always get my assistants going, Oh, I'm so scared to show you the photos of what I've done. And I'm like, I totally understand that because that's exactly how I feel about showing a director yes. and producer my principal photos. Yes. So it works the same way. And it ultimately, yes. those assistant designers are going to be designers one day. So it's all a practice. <laughs> exactly. It's all experience, isn't yeah. it? Okay, so the costumes are sorted. And then when it comes time for filming for principal photography, mm. are you then still involved? Are you on set then? When the how, how does the dressing of them for each scene go? Is that something that happens in the fitting room, in the trailer? What happens there? Yeah. Again, it's just, so it's really nice how you're putting all this because it's, it's definitely flowing really well. So basically, um, we start filming. And if it's an establishing costume, so if we've never seen it before, I will... You remember I've done those fittings and they haven't had yes. hair and makeup done. We haven't done the jewellery right. so much. We haven't right. tweaked it. I might have already done the alterations. I might have put some extra buttons on it. Like that navy blue outfit you saw, I added two buttons to, to Hermia's dress at the last minute because right. I felt it needed something. And those things haven't been discussed with Kaya. So I would, ha I would make sure I was there for the first establishing costume. We'd get them dressed right. in their trailer. And so I had a nice calm environment just to have 20 minutes just to literally just me and her just go through the scene, remind her why we chose this outfit. Right. I, maybe they haven't, maybe the actress doesn't know what outfit I'm using for what scene or what story. Yes, they're. yes, so, of course. I mean, sometimes I try and send them kind of a, a plot with the photo of the costume against the story day. So they've got an idea ahead right. of time, but that's not always the case. And sometimes I don't want to send them to it because it's something I want to discuss face to face. So. I will make sure I'm there for establishing. I'll take it on set to make sure that the director is happy because, again, they might not be aware of when I'm using these right. costumes for which scenes and, and make sure it looks right with what we've discussed with the production designer and actually on set. Make sure I haven't kind of misunderstood that the colour palette is actually navy and she's in a navy dress and you can't oh, see her. Wow. I mean, if that happened, I'd really not be doing my job. But you know, Yes, <laughs> yeah, just in case, you still have to things, check. Things change all the time. So, you know it's important to see that and then I can quickly send back for a jacket or you know something might it's just my responsibility but I can't always be there because then there's more cast coming in you know casts aren't booked at the very beginning they're, they're booked as we go through the job so oh, I nice. might have to have disappeared off to do a fitting for someone else because they're in the next day and they've only just been cast so in that instance I will always go through it with my team explain the fitting my assistant designer would have been in the fitting with me anyway or or if she couldn't have been there would have been someone else in my department the supervisor in the yes. fitting. so someone's there to listen and then as i always say to my team as long you know if you've got to make decisions on set of which there's people there there's my two standbys there to basically facilitate everything i've said and, and they get asked questions all the time about why or can we do this can we do that and I just go, if you can't get hold of me, as long as you've thought about it, as long as you've, just, you've really just considered what the question is and the answer, then it's never wrong because I'm so pleased that someone's kind of thought, what would Charlotte want this to be like? How would, what yes, would Yes, yes. If I come down and go, why have all of a sudden you taken that hat off? And they go, oh, the director wants it. And I'm just like, but why? And they're going, I don't know. I'm like, well, that's not really good. Yes, but yes, if you've gone, yes. oh, because we had a discussion and they felt that actually they wanted it to be more immediate, I'm like, fine. Yeah, there's, there's, you get there's, it there's, then. A, there's a story behind it. it makes yes, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. My goodness me. I can't believe it. Even I didn't know. And I've had a tiny peek into the world of costume designers, but I had no idea that it was, it was this extensive, that, that how much work actually does go into it. 
<laughs> and so, okay, so when so establishing is actually before they're filming, they look at a fully dressed, fully made up, everything's on you in a scene. And yeah. then once they're happy with that, then they'll, will they film it straight away then? Or is that come back the next day? How does that, does it go Oh no, that's, that's literally filming. So right. establishing, the word establishing is basically um, a new costume on camera. Is right, all I mean okay. by that. So okay. I will take it more seriously because it's a new costume that's never been seen on camera. Right. But then okay. that that costume might be reused again because it's the same story day two weeks down the line and it's already been seen. So I might not be there for that because we've already established what jewelry goes with it, what coat wear is worn with it. You know all those things. Yes. And so your work continues because, as you said, casts are still coming in as yeah. filming is progressing. Yeah. And so are you pretty much all the way through to to lockdown of the picture then? Are you pretty much all the way through to the very end? Yeah, absolutely. I think it probably gets to, you kind of hope that you might have a bit of a quieter time in the last two weeks so you can actually enjoy yourself or tie up paperwork. Yes, <laughs> yes, but, um, yes. I mean, something like, if we go to Killing Eve, which everyone knows really well, um, something like that, the scripts, they, there's, oh gosh, it's a long time ago now, there's eight episodes and I would only get two episodes to film at any one time. So the scripts are coming in right. all the time, new scripts for the next two right, of course. episodes yes, to film. Next episodes. So you're, you're non-stop, you're constantly doing that. And, and, and then also you've got actors that are on set all the time. So you've got those new scripts to get through, break down, do the whole process again, shop for, and then you need to get hold of the actors to do a fitting. Well, they're on camera all the time. So when oh, are you going to get to see yes. them? So poor Jodie yes. was doing fittings at lunchtime whenever she could to try and set up for the next episodes because that's the only time oh, available. Gosh. Yes, of course. Yeah. And what's what's your favourite bit of the whole process? What do, what do you like doing the most out of it? I love the fitting process. I adore the... I love... I think my favourite bit is prep, coming up with the ideas, finding the pieces, doing the fitting, having the conversation, having the really gorgeous collaborative um, moments. Um, I think that's the most exciting, most creative bit for me. The filming yes. process, I've been that person on set, I get really bored. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I, I, I'm not, it's not for me. I mean, the people who work on set are amazing, but they, there's, they need a lot of concentration because they're looking at everything all the time, watching the monitors, yes. checking the collars sat in the right position, checking the sleeves at the right height, checking, you know, the, are the earrings still in? Has one fallen out? Um, right, I see, yes. You know, all those details, I, uh, attention to detail, I think they're incredible. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's delightful. And then also creating real characters. I love creating real gritty characters. I mean, you even look at the pale horse and you look at the witches and they're just... An amalgamation. Oh, they were so scary. They were so <laughs> scary, those three women. <laughs> they're great fun, but they're eclectic kind of mixture of different periods yes. to make them real. You know, they just, they, they, they were real depending on their age. I really looked into their age and their backgrounds um, to make sure that each one wore clothes that kind of identified with them. Yes. And, and that's filters through from whether you're doing period to doing modern day. You, you kind of, you have to get into the social background of the person you know, their age, they were, to really kind of um, be able to create a true, real character. I, I'm sorry, I finished Her Horse last summer and then I moved on to this modern day one. So I've gone from period to modern day again and hopefully the next one will be period. So be yeah. <laughs> Charlotte, that's fantastic. You've really given yeah. us a good insight into what goes on in the world of costume behind the scenes. Thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Yes. <laughs> take care thank you charlotte All thank right, take you care. bye bye